I didn't know that my purpose was activism. I didn't go in search of a cause. I went in search of a purpose. And the purpose and desire in my heart led me to the ancient redwoods. When I walked into the redwoods, I walked into a cathedral that was more majestic than any man-made church I've ever been at. And then when I found out what was happening, it was a calling I couldn't turn away from. In November of 1997, 23-year-old Julia Hill left Fayetteville, Arkansas to join the scores of protesters living near the Headwaters Forest of Northern California. I met Julia early December of 97 when uh, she showed up at our Earth First Base Camp. I actually first climbed Luna because it was the first thing that somebody plugged me into. I tried for like a week to get involved in the movement out here and people kept turning me away. I was actually just cleaning up trash and recycling at the activist base camp because that was the only person that would talk to me. But then someone was walking around saying we need someone to sit in Luna. And I didn't really know much about what sitting in trees meant, but I knew it had to do with protecting the forest. I knew I was out here to protect the forest. And like, me, choose me, pick me, pick me, please pick me. And of course, he didn't recognize me, so he kind of looked over me and looked at everybody else, and he's waiting for somebody else to volunteer. <laughs> and nobody would, so I got picked. Originally, it started out, she left, she was leaving this, our house in Arcata, in December, or was it December 9th? the day before she was going to go up and uh, she was walking her from the house saying see everybody in two weeks because that's what people did they'd go for a week they'd go for a day a half a day whatever you felt like sitting and we'd accommodate it. they hiked me up the hill and they said this is a harness and this is how you put it on and this is a prussic rope and this is how you tie it and that's how you climb and i said okay and so up i came i knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was meant to be up here. But I wasn't quite sure why. I just knew I was meant to be in the forest doing something. A culture of violence began to fester in the forests of Northern California. Please go! Police applied pepper spray to the eyes of demonstrators. Encounters like this, between activists and loggers, were becoming increasingly hostile. Less than an hour after this confrontation was videotaped, the enraged logger felled this tree near the protesters, killing 24-year-old activist David Gypsy Chain. This climate of threats and intimidation swirled around Julia as she began her vigil. Pacific Lumber Max Sam Corporation began December 11th, my first morning up here, by cutting those two trees right off of Luna's trunk, saying, we're going through the trunk, you better come down. When that didn't work, they hovered the twin propeller to the helicopter above my head. When one week in February, sh there was massive helicopter logging going on to the point where I could hardly hear her. These huge twin propeller helicopters that have 300 mile an hour updrafts that twist everything like a rubber band, blow any life into smithereens. She was giving me a blow by blow account of how the helicopters ripped the trees up and how they, you know, destroy other trees in their path with their updrafts. At, at one point in the conversation, I could not even hear Julia anymore. It was so loud. Branches are ripping off. I mean, it was nuts. Well, that didn't work. So then they get the bright idea, they're going to starve me. There was a point when uh, Pacific Lumber put Julia under a siege and it lasted 10 days. They show up with security guards and rope off an area around the tree and shine floodlights, and they're going to starve me down. We knew we had to do something, and, and we tried to sneak up and get food. That didn't work. 
because it had security, it had lights all around the tree, like just tons of people. And so I was really being assaulted, you know, mentally and physically. They were saying things that I won't repeat about what they were going to do to me when they got me out of the tree, you know what I mean? Just really, they were trying to wear me down and they were doing a really good job of it. She was starting to run out of food and, and we knew that and she used the last of her phone battery power to let us know what was going on. So on the last shred of battery power, we worked out this scenario with my pager. We gathered 19 people and we hiked up the hill. They created this diversion, running around like chickens with their heads cut off, laughing. There was only three security guards and one of them had actually developed a crush on Julie over the time he was there. So he wasn't in our way and another was uh, kind of guarding their stuff. And then the other guy was like, there's 19 people like just kind of running around. And we had this code and I had lowered down the bag through the lowest branch which was still like 75 feet above the ground so they couldn't get it. And then they called the number and I dropped the rope. And when the rope came down we clipped the bag on really fast and we're like go 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 and she hauled up. And we pulled it off not only once but twice we pulled it off. And then the very next day they were gone because the last words we said as we were leaving was like see you guys next week. <laughs> And the storms were so bad at that point. I think the combination of the horrific storms and us pulling off a supply run, they just said, forget it. We're just going to leave her up there. For over 100 years, Pacific Lumber was a family-owned company, widely praised for its sustainable forestry practices. It controlled thousands of acres of standing timber, including some of the only groves of ancient redwoods still in existence. In 1985, Charles Hurwitz, a Texas billionaire and head of Maxim Corporation, acquired Pacific Lumber in a leveraged buyout. Environmentalists claim that in order to finance the $800 million of debt incurred in the takeover, Pacific Lumber aggressively stepped up its rate of logging increasing the stress on the region's ecosystem. A tree sit was originally begun as a way to help bring a spotlight to the point where a forest becomes a product. Because in people's minds out there, they see a forest or they see pictures of a forest and they go, oh, how beautiful. And then they go to Home Depot and buy an old growth forest product for their deck. Or they go to Walmart and buy 99 cent bleach destroyed forest paper and their mind doesn't make the connection at what point does that forest become that product and how do our consumer choices affect that relationship. In the first few weeks I was up here, I was trying like crazy to get the mainstream media to talk about what's happening out here. And they're like, tree sitting? Yeah, so what? Are you doing something new? Headwaters Forest, we already covered that. Anything new? Did they sign the deal yet? No? Okay, why are you bothering us? And so I realized that they needed, you know, a hook, an angle. And uh, I found out the national record was 43 days. So I thought, well, if I stay and break that record, Americans love record breaking and numbers, you know, maybe that'll get the media to talk about what's happening out here. She actually sat three separate times in Luna. She sat the first time was for five days, and the second time was for six days, and then the third time was for 738 days. 